Let's take the terms again here, the, uh, the sheet on the terms, and make sure that we've covered them. I think there's a couple we have now. Давайте возьмем список терминов, проясним те термины, которых мы еще не касались. You don't need to learn all these terms except on the on the sheet that was given you, but uh, these two, four, six, eight terms I'd like you to know, and that the quiz will be on things like that. Oh, you got nine because you got Nirvana in there, and I've, I've uh, did I explain Nirvana? Oh, uh, on your on your sheet. Well, let's go through the terms one at a time. Brahman. Итак, Brahman или Brahma. Um, any questions on that one? Вопросы есть какие-нибудь? It's или всем понятно, что это? It's the big circle. Это вот этот самый большой. Brahman, как это называют? А вот там внизу будет Брахманы или Брамины, касты индуистских священников внизу. Атман, I don't think we talked about that, did we? Атман, а этого понятия мы еще не касались, не так ли? Атман is the term for 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 you, for me, for for ourself. Атман это термин, который описывает нас, меня, вас, то есть самого себя. Atman is the thing that reincarnates until you realize that you are God. Atman это то, что перевоплощается, пока ты не не осознаешь, что ты есть Бог и не сливаешься с Богом. I mean, Hinduism would say that you, your real self, is part of Brahman, part of God. Hinduism скажет, что ваше настоящее я это часть Брахмана. But you don't realize that yet. Но uh, ты еще uh, этого не понимаешь. So Поэтому ты еще в этом цикле находишься. Когда ты наконец поймешь, что ты являешься частью Бога, and you can become detached from the cycle and, and you can move into Brahman uh, as, as you really belong. So uh, Atman is, is the real you that's one with Brahman. Yeah. Karma is, I mean, uh, Maya is that illusion that makes you think that the real world is real, Maya but it isn't. Karma, the moral law of cause and effect, the personal consequences. And samsara is that, re that this cycle of recurring births. Samsara или сансара, повторяющийся цикл рождения и смерти. That the Hindu wants to get out of. Из которого любой индуист стремится вырваться. And getting out of it is called moksha. That's release from this cycle. А как раз освобождение от этого цикла и называется мокша. Это следующий термин. And yoga is a way or ways of getting out of this cycle. Дальше нирвану пропускаем. Йога физические и психические упражнения, которые используются для освобождения или укрепления духа, и способствуют отдалению от мира с целью растворения в брахмане, то есть в абсолюте. We sometimes think of yoga only as the meditation. Иногда мы воспринимаем йогу только как медитацию. Transcendental meditation and so on. На трансцендентную медитацию и подобное. But I think technically in Hinduism, yoga has includes all these possible ways of Salvation of getting out of this cycle. Yoga в индуизме подразумевает разные способы спасения в кавычках, то есть освобождения от сансары. Disciplined detachment from this world, so that you 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 merge into the absolute, like a drop into the ocean. А чем вот сейчас, если мы немножко назад, мокши нирвана вот. Uh, what's the difference between moksha and nirvana? Okay, oh yeah. Oh, you had, okay. Nirvana, um, I omitted nirvana from, from my version here simply because some people feel that nirvana is a Buddhist term rather than a Hindu term. Вот здесь я в своем новом варианте словаря вот этого тезауруса по индуистским терминам вообще нирвану вычеркнула, опустил, потому что некоторые люди считают, что нирвана это скорее буддийский термин, чем индуистский. Except moksha maybe is the process of being released, and nirvana is kind of what 
where you go when you get released. Я, uh, я бы сказал, что, скорее всего, между этими двумя терминами разницы нет, или может быть очень маленькая разница. Скажем, мокша означает процесс освобождения, а нирвана это как бы uh, результат освобождения, то есть то, чего ты в итоге достигаешь. In other words, nirvana is is quote the destination. Другими словами, если мы будем рассматривать это как некое путешествие, то мокша это путь, а нирвана это конечная точка. The Buddhist wants to get to nirvana. То есть буддист стремится к достижению нирваны. And somebody asked, we'll get to that when we get to Buddhism, but I believe someone supposedly asked Buddha, what what is this when you get there? And he said, "Don't know. It's, I mean, it's unknown, but it's just, <laughs> you know. But it's described. But it's the destination, in a sense. То есть в некотором смысле нирвана это такой пункт назначения. Если бы кто-то спросил Буду, что это такое, да, вряд ли бы он смог это описать, потому что мы не знаем это, это нечто. Но нирвана видится как именно пункт назначения. Now this book lists nirvana." As a term under Hinduism and as a term under Buddhism, so it. В нашем учебнике нирвана упоминается в списках терминов как для описания верования индуизма, так и буддизма. So it may be fine to use nirvana in connection with Hinduism too, but I think some some people say, well, it's really a Buddhist term rather than a Hindu term, so I've dropped it. But it's that's a matter for debate. Поскольку нирвана может использоваться для описания вот этого состояния, о котором мы говорим, и с точки зрения индуизма, и с точки зрения буддизма, то можно использовать этот термин. С другой же стороны, я его вычеркнула из этого списка, потому что некоторые люди полагают, что этот термин принадлежит буддизму, и использовать его для описания индуистского состояния какого-то в индуизме, да, для состояния необоснованного, в избежании всякого рода таких вот возражений, я его и вычеркнул. And the last term is avatar, which is an incarnation of a deity. И последний термин аватар – воплощение божества. And we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Об аватаре мы будем буквально сразу же сейчас и говорить. But I would like you to take this sheet and uh, I, I give it to you because of the diagrams, so that you don't need to draw the diagrams yourself. Okay. And I, I sort of redrew it here. Um, this is types of Hinduism. And it, it, maybe we can kind of now review and hopefully something will become a little clearer here. You think of a continuum here. And on this side of the continuum is, is pantheism. And on that side is polytheism. Now, there are different schools or types of Hinduism. And one of the hard things that we, well, one of the confusing things that we've been talking about here is we don't know for sure which school of Hinduism we're talking about, we're describing when, when we go through these. We've, we've talked about, we kind of lump them together. И, как я уже говорил, трудно заключается в том, что здесь мы даем некие общие характеристики как бы всех, всех этих школ вместе. Когда мы с вами говорим о том или ином индуистском понятии, мы до конца не понимаем, какую школу мы сейчас отражаем, убеждение, какой школы мы сейчас цитируем. Мы как бы сливаем их воедино и даем некие общие принципы. Pantheism. I mean, really, total pantheism. На получается левый, да? А стороне континуума у нас с вами строгий пантеизм. Строгий пантеизм. The Hindu philosopher that you'll see the name for here is Shankara. Shankara, это индуистский философ. 
Shankara was a was a famous Hindu philosopher that was a strict pantheist. His kind of Hinduism is this kind. <coughs> Only Brahman exists. Okay. The material world outside of, of uh, outside of this circle is just an illusion. It is not real. It's like a dream. That's you. That's trees, animals, rocks. Everything. Not, not real. It's an illusion. We're dreaming that we are this. According to Shankara. Um, your, yourself, your Atman is a part of Brahma. So Shankara's kind of Hinduism says, you want, maybe the dreams are bad, maybe the dreams are not so bad. Maybe. But the best thing to do is to wake up from this dream world, realize that you and everything in the material world is an illusion, not real, and when you do that, I mean, okay, yeah. Wake up from that dream world, yeah. А и лучшее, что мы с вами можем сделать, это проснуться, пробудиться от иллюзии, осознать, что все, что нас окружает, неправда, всего лишь сон. Until you wake up to that fact, you'll, you'll be trapped in this cycle of rebirths, 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 and you'd like to get out of that. Мы так и будем продолжать перевоплощаться, а наша цель вырваться из этого цикла перевоплощения. But again. When you wake up, you will merge like a drop into the ocean, and you will merge into nothingness, unconsciousness. And Shankara said, that's the best way to be. And and these forms of yoga help you to do that. So that's Shankara kind of Hinduism. There was another Hindu philosopher named Rama Uja. Rama Uja. I put an N in there. Rama Nuja. Yeah. Rama Nuja. Uh, and he, he, we call that kind of, uh, not strict pantheism, but I don't know how you're going to interpret this, qualified theism. I mean, it's a move toward theism. It's a kind of a, an evolution toward the, theism, mm -hmm. a kind of sort of the, theism. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's перевести получше, ну как бы переход к теизму, вот так скажем. So, Ramanuja said, Brahman, this impersonal Brahman, has, has extended itself or manifested, manifested itself in some material and personal ways. And they're not just illusion like this. I mean, I've dotted this like this because they're illusion according to this. But according to the second time of Hinduism, no, these are real things in the, in the world. Some real things and their, their personal gods that have come out of Brahman. Um, now, Ramanuja's kind of Hinduism says it's still not full theism because these things are still part of the impersonal Brahman to some extent or another. They kind of go out, maybe they come back again. 
So I mean, it's a kind of a half theism. Этот теизм можно назвать полутеизм. Полутеизм в том смысле, что вот эти все реально воплощенные боги, например, Шива и так далее, то есть они как бы хоть и существуют реально, но по сущности являются тем же самым Брахманом. They're not totally different. They're not totally different from this, and therefore. It's not full theism that says there is God and he is totally different than his creation. This is the creation is a you know, is still kind of part of God but с точки зрения романологии, несмотря на то, что они как бы отдельные существа, это они все равно не абсолютно отличные от Брахмана. А как теисты говорят, что есть творец и есть творение, не абсолютно отличные друг от друга. А в данном случае, в некотором смысле, все вот эти воплощения, они все равно и есть Брахман. So you had asked uh, uh, earlier if Brahman ever communicates. Uh, if you could ever get any message, your friend, if you could ever get any message from Brahman. I think Shankara, this type, would say no. But this type is a little more theistic, а and you say, oh, yeah, Brahman is, is kind of communicating in personal ways. So, uh, then the third kind is extreme polytheism over here. Where the common Hindu on the street worships many gods. In fact, some say there are millions of gods worshipped in Hinduism. And people, on, people of that type basically are consumed with the uh, with the question, how can I please the gods? How can I keep them from being angry with me? I mean, how can I get rid of my sins so that I can come back in the next life better than I am now? These Hindus might think they might think a little bit about achieving moksha, but they don't think about it very much, I don't think. I mean, in their minds, achieving moksha might be thousands of years away, and what they're concerned about now is how to get better in the next life that's coming. С их точки зрения достижение мокши это, наверное, очень-очень далекая перспектива. Главное же, что их беспокоит на данный момент, как лучше воплотиться в следующей жизни. So they're pretty much focused on, you know, just getting better in the next life rather than getting out of the cycle. Внимание на ближайшей перспективе, то бишь на следующей жизни, а не на далекой с их точки зрения мокши. Is there any founder of this school? No, I don't think there's any philosopher. This is the this is folk religion. I mean, this is this is folk Hinduism now. It's the, the common person on the street is, just functions that way. But these are two different schools. And do you see the difference between them? This is really just pure pantheism, but now they started to evolve a little theism here and then gone completely to total polytheism. So one of the difficulties that we probably ran into in your thoughts when we went through those Hindus believe this is we didn't, we were talking without distinguishing these, these schools. And uh, I realize you can't really do that, but it's just one of the difficulties of Hinduism. <laughs> 
и вот вопросы и проблемы, которые, с которыми мы с вами до сих пор сталкивались в изучении индуизма, как раз во многом обусловлены тем, что мы рассматривали его в общем, а, не, не принимая во внимание различные школы индуизма, а, а сделать это очень трудно. Я думаю, что скорее нужно говорить более примерно. Now, um... What do these three types, and there's, I'm sure there's more than these three types to all What do all these three have in common? I think all three of these would believe in reincarnation, for one They all think there is a cycle of rebirths and that they will come around again and again. In other words, when we were lived in Malaysia, our Hindu neighbors across the street uh, operated at this level. Когда мы, например, жили в Малайзии, наши соседи на той стороне улицы как раз и придерживались подобного рода убеждения, которые относятся к третьему типу. И они ожидали нового какого-то воплощения, то есть это то событие, которого они ждали в своей жизни. Таким образом, можно сказать, что реинкарнация характерна для этих трех типов. I think again, all of all three. The second thing, I think all three of these would uh, would believe that their in that your inner self, your Atman, your real self, the real you, uh, is divine. In other words, it's a part of God, of Brahm. In other words, they all believe that. All three would say, we are part of God. And I mentioned, the, I mentioned this, this typical Hindu greeting that, you know, that the, 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 pers the Hindu would give you, uh, be bowing to you. And behind that apparently is the idea I worship the God in you, the divine in you. So that's the second thing they would all feel, uh, all agree on. And I think the third thing they all three schools would agree on, they would all believe in the law of karma, that you get, ex yeah, that you get exactly what you deserve. And there's no escape from that law. So you see, even though they're different, there are some common threads that say, yeah. So that uh, even though um, uh, no two Hindus define Hinduism exactly the same, yet there is such a thing as Hinduism. И даже несмотря на то, что даже два различных индуиста по-разному определяют, что такое индуизм, некие общие положения, которые характеризуют любую школу индуизма, все-таки присутствуют. Это значит, мы можем говорить об религии, о религии индуизм в общем. Question. А Кришну можно к какой школе отнести? Хари Кришна. Wait just a minute till we finish this second, uh, this last, last section, and we'll, I think I can tell you where Hare Krishna comes in. Hare Krishna is definitely in this school. Uh, that's, your, your diagram has this. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Uh, Let's let's go on here to the last section. Uh, concerning Jesus Christ. Okay, now we have moved away from this school into this school.
This school of Hinduism believes that God has become incarnate many times. And that's where this term avatar comes in. That is an incarnation of God. Um, this school says that the impersonal Brahman has spun out three main gods. Brahma, not Brahman, or not Brahman, but Brahma. Mm -hmm. uh, the creator god, supposedly. Mm -hmm. And Vishnu and uh, Shiva. Um, Vishnu is called the preserver god and this is called, I believe, the destroyer god. Uh, and Bra Brahma is the creator. Yeah, creator, preserver, destroyer. Okay. Представители этой школы утверждают, что Бог воплотился вот в трех. These are the main incarnations, Yeah, the main. Yeah, the main. В основном в трех богах: боги Вишну, это хранитель Шива, разрушитель, и Брахма, творец. This can be called. This can be called the main Hindu triad, the main Hindu three threesome. Now this school of So believes that God has become incarnate many times. This school believes that there are ten incarnation. Vishnu has become incarnate ten in ten other gods. One of those other gods, they think, is Krishna. So, in other words, they, they would say Krishna is one of the ten incarnations of Vishnu. Uh, and, and Hare Krishna people worship this particular god named Krishna. They, um, uh, you know, they, they have, they personally believe that Krishna is, is the Lord that they accept and worship. So yeah, that's, that's where that comes in. Is the Lord for them? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the God they worship. Yeah. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Secondly, uh, Louisa, you want to read B? Okay. Um, in other words, if... If Vishnu has become incarnate in all these other gods, we Christians say God has become, I mean, Christ has become incarnate. He has come to us and become one of us. Now, Hindus, the, one Hindu said this, reported He said, we Hindus would be willing to accept Jesus Christ as one of the ten incarnations of Vishnu. If you Christians would just stop insisting he's the only incarnation of God. In other words, uh, he said, the Hindu said, the problem with you Christians, you're saying God only became incarnate once in the person of Jesus Christ. We, we say there have been many incarnations of God. And we wouldn't mind agreeing that Jesus might be one of them, but you're so exclusive about it. Okay, the last one sees no atonement in Christ's death on the cross. And that's what Gandhi... 
And and that's what Gandhi said. He said uh, he said that he couldn't believe he could not believe that there was any mysterious or miraculous virtue in Christ's death on the cross. Yeah, he couldn't, he couldn't believe that there was anything special about that. I mean, Gandhi knew about the Christian faith. He was informed. He said, I like the Bible. I like the Gita. I like, uh, he said, you know, all kinds of holy books he likes, he said. But, Okay, um, someone read that last, that last uh, section on the Christian faith then. За всю историю человечества Бог воплощался один только раз в лице Иисуса Христа. Иисус Христос – это уникальный Бога-человек, несравнимый ни с кем другим. Бог сделал возможным искупление грехов через смерть Христа. Только благодаря крови Христа стало возможно прощение грехов. So we have the great difference between what the Bible teaches and, of course, what Hinduism. Там еще можно вопрос. Я слышал, что поклонники именно Шивы, да, рушителя, там это, это поклонение настолько жестоко, что там они даже приносят человеческие жертвы. Как же это? Well, I've heard that the, uh, the ones uh, who worship Shiva mm -hmm. uh, have very cruel rituals, even sacrifice people. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Because yeah. he is a destroyer. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's any sacrifices going on these days that are that serious or not, but uh, there are some grotesque rituals. I'm going to show you some tomorrow in some overheads from Malaysia and Singapore. But I'm not aware of anything as serious as human sacrifice going on in Hinduism. Would, uh, would someone read Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10? Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. Смотрите, братья, чтобы кто не увлек вас философией и пустым обольщением по преданию человеческому, по сети мира, а не по Христу, бо в нем обитает вся полнота Божества телеса. И вы имеете полноту в нем, которая есть глава всякого начальства и власти. Окей, а мой английский версия говорит, See that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy. How does, what does your, what does, what's, is that the idea? Yeah. Um, this is a description of Hinduism in a way, isn't it? A hollow and deceptive philosophy. Now Paul wasn't talking, of course, about Hinduism when he wrote this. But it is a hollow and deceptive philosophy which is made up of human traditions and worldly principles, like Paul says here. Now, 
And Paul says, beware of this. Uh, we, don't, we don't need this. Uh, we have received Christ Jesus as Lord and we have everything that we need in Him. I mean, Paul says in verse 9, in Christ all the fullness of deity, all the fullness of deity lives in Christ. And uh, uh, so, so we, um, we see the vast difference between our, our faith, our biblical faith, and, and Hinduism. Why is Hinduism so confusing? Well, again, partly because it isn't just one thing, it's a number of so many different things. But the second reason why it's so confusing is because it's not true. I mean, it's, it's, it's based on a false, on falsehood. Why, why is it so hard for us to grasp this idea that we're not... Why is it hard to grasp the idea that, that we're not real and this table isn't real and everything? I mean, why, why does this, is this, I can't understand this. One reason we can't understand it because it's not true. I mean, we are real. <laughs> and this table is real. <laughs> and this, this material world is real. So any, any philosophy that tries to help, to tries to tell us that it isn't, we just, it just says, oh, it doesn't make sense. In Hinduism, they probably do. Um, in fact, I think if I can find it, I'm going to read something to you. Uh, it might. It's, it, it was coming up tomorrow, but I'll see if I can find it here. Uh, well, I might have to wait till tomorrow. Yeah, I think that Hinduism has caught some things from Christianity. I will try to bring something tomorrow that hopefully uh, it, this uh, it, it's a quote from a Hindu that was bathing in the Ganges River, which is supposedly a holy river in India. And this this Hindu man said, "Now, now that I have bathed in this holy in the holy Ganges River, my sins have been washed away." And I'll go to heaven when I die. Well, you ask, this is a Hindu saying this. He's talking about going to heaven when he dies. That's not the way Hindus are supposed to think. I mean, you know, I mean, that's not the way they talk. But, but he, ha I think he had assimilated, caught some things from the Christian faith, and uh, he's now verbalizing things sort of in... Вот, мне кажется, в своем мировоззрении включил некоторые элементы христианской веры и таким образом 
озвучил вот эти элементы в таком утверждении. Any questions on, on Hinduism? Does, does this make sense at all? Есть ли какие-то вопросы по индуизму? Это вообще имеет хоть какой-то смысл? I don't mean does it make sense in the right way, but I mean is it understandable what we're Причем trying to say? Причем не имеет смысл с точки зрения содержания этого учения. А для вас складывается в единую картину то, о чем ну, я говорю? Да? Вы получаете да. более или менее отчетливое, насколько ну, да, 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 может да, быть да, получено да, представление да. об этой религии. Получается. So you feel you got a little handle on what Hinduism is about. То есть теперь у вас складывается хотя бы какое-то представление о том, что такое индуизм, да? Это же название придумал. Не индуизм, а религия пустоты. I even, I even, I would even rename it into the religion of emptiness. That is not a bad name. Yes, that's a pretty, that's probably a pretty good name. Неплохое название, даже очень хорошее, я бы сказал. Um. That's what the Hindu wants, emptiness, nothingness. Вот к этому, в общем-то, индуисты стремятся, mm -hmm. к ничего, к ничто, mm -hmm. к пустоте. Again, how thankful we can be that God doesn't have nothingness in store for us. И опять же, вот думая об этом, наверное, исполняешься особой благодарностью за то, что Бог для нас уготовил совсем не ничто. God has heaven in store for us. А небеса. Ну да, оставил нашу личность. Но нам очень трудно понять, почему да, это это... что для них является таким привлекательным. Это самоцель. 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 